Well, no my Heidi my and kia ora fellas. Welcome back. Four days to go until we uh, can catch up with one another and chew the fat, tell some lies and just have a great time. No doubt a few beers and a few yarns are going to go down at our dinner and I just can't wait to see you all. And when you come down, travel safe, um, however you're coming down. Uh, you know, we want you to get here in one piece so we can catch up with you at the weekend. We are at video number 47. Thanks, guys. That's bloody awesome. You know, I had a goal of 50, and we're almost there. I've got a couple more lined up, so it's going really well. Video number 47. Now, our next guest interviewee and fellow uh, old boyfriend uh, was a day boy. Uh, came to Silverstream uh, in 89, like us, as a third former and left at the end of his sixth form year. Um, it's great to have another day boy on, on board with these videos because we really wanted to cast a, a good mix of boarders and day boys. And, and again, we were all pretty close anyway. I'm pretty close with this fellow because we actually went to the same intermediate school together at Maidstone Intermediate uh, in, in Upper Hutt. So we did our form one and form two together. Uh, he was a great little rugby player. Great little halfback, didn't take a step back, fought well above his weight, uh, wearing the number nine jersey um, at the side of the scrum. He played some great rugby for a great club in Upper Heart called Rimataka, uh, which was a really cool, uh, very family, whanau orientated club, now amalgamated with uh, Upper Heart Rugby, uh, doing okay out there in, in my old hometown. But look, he also has a, an amazing job. And for those... I'm not sure what the exact term is, what he does, but he'll tell us. It might be a stonemason or something similar to that. But basically, this next old boy friend of ours, he makes fantastic creations, uh, headstones um, for, um, for loved ones that have passed away uh, at cemeteries. He makes the most magnificent headstones, and he's made them for my family, for my wife's family. He's made, you know, he touches all sorts of families, and he's made an awesome career out of it so hoping we can talk about that um, when we get into our interview so all the way from my hometown upper hut it's wonderful to see and to welcome aaron whiteman kia ora aaron kia ora Uch. oh <laughs> good to see you and can i just say look at this fellow he's ready to go he's going to be coming to the dinner this weekend he's got a silver stream rugby jersey on fantastic sure have. look at this and, and he's in it still fits him. Look at that. Growl. And and he's even got, can you guys remember this? The four pillars. He's got the four pillars cap on. Now, before we start this question, take us through the four pillars, bro, because I, I must admit, I can't remember them. Uh, so the four pillars, uh, if my memory is correct, which I'm sure it is, was um, sarcasm, arrogance, hardcore piss, and loose women. <laughs> um, pretty sure that all of us have probably had at least one two three or four of those things in our lives so yeah yeah, yeah no it's, it's been well done mate happen. yeah well done for digging yeah. that out and um the four pillars yeah absolutely <laughs> i guarantee <laughs> that uh all of us would have had the one if not <laughs> most of them <laughs> at some point of our life hey yeah, Aaron. definitely Thanks for joining us, bro. It's good to see you. I really appreciate you coming on and just really looking forward to having a quick chat. And um, I know the boys will be keen to um, just know what you've sort of been up to over, over all these years. You know, it's been nearly 30 years since we've been out of school. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. It's been a been a long time. And uh, leaving, obviously, the end of sixth form, like I thought I was kind of one of the only ones that, that left. But looking at these videos, you know, there's I was amazed at how many guys left um, at, at the end of sixth form. So yeah, you're spot quite on. interesting. <clears throat> really yeah, surprised yeah. myself actually. I didn't realise just yeah. how many had left. Um, yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it's, no, it's it's, well, these videos have been really revealing and, and and awesome. Okay, your turn. Take us back to what brought you to St Pat's. Um, of course, you didn't live far away from the college. So tell, tell us, what brought you there and, you know, what were your first initial memories or thoughts of, of the college? Yeah, that was um, a great place to go. Uh, very lucky. Uh, so my father and my uncles uh, went to St. Pat's um, when they were they were younger. I think they, back in those days, they didn't stay too long. They were sort of, you know, in for two years, maybe three, and then they're off, off working. But 
Uh, so I was always keen to to go there. And mum and dad said I could go to any any college. You know, obviously, you know, here at Tonga or up at Hutt, so, uh, and St Pat's was the one I wanted to go to. So it was yeah, very good. Um, and getting there, kind of, you know, the old buildings and that sort of thing. Like I reckon we were at a good time where we were still able to experience all those old buildings and all that old history. Um, yeah, obviously, we've got the new buildings as well, but the old ones, you know, those old corridors and all the front rooms opposite the chapel and the big hallways and things like that were pretty uh, um, pretty epic when you when you haven't had anything like that before. Um, so I was quite impressed with that. Um, and then going from uh, Maidstone, as you said, there was yourself, there was Jamie Williams and, and me that went from there. So um, it, was, it, was, it was just the three, the three of us, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, just the three of us. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so tell me, um, so did you know by Form 1 that you wanted to go to stream? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. No, I'd, I'd always, I'd never going to go anywhere else. So, but we were kind of Catholic back in the day, but um, didn't get confirmed and that, that kind of thing. So that might have counted against us, but I've been on the waiting list for a little while, I think. And obviously with dad being there as an old boy, yeah. that, um, you know, that, that counted for a lot, so. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah managed, managed to get in. So, yeah, yeah. I, I remember. Um, I'm pretty sure Jamie had to do the same thing, but because we went to um, sort of mainstream intermediate schools, you know, we, we had to go get extra um, Catholic uh, lessons or, or what, yeah. whatever, you, whatever you call it to, um, to cement our places, so to speak. Um, yeah. certainly yeah. glad we did, of course, because you know, um, it, it you know, was, was a great time in, in, in my life now. Can you remember your first day and, and what um what was your third form form class? Tell us about that. So my first day uh we got into class and the first chap I met was Scott Jensen. Oh. Um a fellow we, we got on bloody well and we were good good mates for, um probably drifted apart a little bit towards the latter of school, but certainly in the first couple of years and both halfbacks and that sort of stuff. So it was yeah, yeah. So he was the first first guy I met um obviously apart from you two um and I was in three BE so Mr Bingry uh yeah awesome. so it was yeah it was good good class we had a good good mix of chaps um yeah yeah how I was trying to actually look before and see how many uh you know to see who was in there but oh, ran wow. out of time but that's all right how fitting that you met up with uh, well the first guy you met was Scott you know Scotty J like you say both halfbacks um, yeah, yeah. You know, we only only just interviewed Scott last night, and he'll be here uh, on Saturday. So you'll be looking forward to catching up with Scotty. I yeah, very much so. Because he's um, one bloke that I've kind of you know wondered over the years what he's been up to. You know, because I knew he'd come from a farm. I was like, oh, is he a farmer or you know what, what's he up to? And, uh, and then I saw him uh, last night, and I was a oh, teacher. So are you gonna be good? Yeah, oh, really good teacher. So yeah, you just don't know what people do. You know? So nah. I mean, I've been amazed by everyone that on here, um, yeah. of what what they're up to. Um, wow, and, you know, impressed with everyone. It's everyone seems to be doing well. Yeah, absolutely. Now tell us about. Yeah. So you left us in um, at the end of sixth form. What did you do after that, or the year after that? Right, so I'd I'd been doing um, like working in supermarkets and, and that sort of stuff after school, uh, and I was going to go into that kind of side of it and look at getting into like managing supermarkets and things like that. Um, but the place I was go where I was working at they closed down, um, and then I ended up my nana heard on the radio about a sign writing um, pre apprenticeship course, and um, I thought you know she rang me up and said I'd. Oh, do you want to have a go at that? And I've, you know, because I've always been um, not too bad at drawing and I love tech drawing and um, design and all that sort of thing. So, um, and she said she'll pay for it. And I said, okay, sounds good. Wow. So I did a six month pre apprenticeship uh, that was in town up early mornings and on the train into um, top of Taranaki Street. And yeah, so six months there. Finished that, uh, or almost finished that. And then one of the uh, monumental masons uh, was that dad knew obviously uh, working up at the cemetery at um, Akatara for those years um, they were looking for a young fellow that could draw and wanted to start so I went and had a look and I've been doing the same thing ever since so right from 17 and a half up to now which I'm 45 so incredible now for the guys that are, 
guys that are watching this video, um, now I'm going to share a screen in a minute because I'm going to show you some of Aaron's uh, work. Now, Aaron is um, very humble because Aaron is one of the best uh, monumental stonemasons around. And, and I'm not just saying that because he's a mate and a streamer. Uh, I've heard from other people. Um, I've heard from funeral directors, a couple of better friends. Uh, well known now, mate. So look, really proud of you, bro. Good on you because, you know, what you do is not easy Thanks, and it's a real um, emotional time for families. You know, you've looked after my mum, my dad, my wife's um, family, you know, and you know, that, that's just one part of the job. And then you've got the artistic part and, you know, things are very modern now of how you can design and what, what you can and can't do. I'm going to share a screen. Just bear with me, Aaron, because I want the boys Sweet. to have a look at this. And I'm just going to bring... Bear with me, fellas. I just want to show you a bit of um, Aaron's work here and sort of show you the idea. So, Aaron, I'm pretty sure you can see what I'm seeing. So, this is yeah, uh, um, this is my uh, my mum's husband who unfortunately passed away in 2019 now, time's flying. But this is the sort of work that Aaron does. So, my mum had a specific um, wish, um, or, or actually Dave had a specific wish of, of what he wanted on his headstone and this is what Aaron can accommodate so you'll see the details for example down here I've got the cursor you know Dave was a beer drinker so he loved his double brown beer you know very very mm -hmm. simple man he was an excavator digger driver for windstone quarries so you know diggers and machinery were, were a big part of this of of, of his life um, now this big rock here was actually from the quarry that Dave worked at uh, up at Belmont. So, of course, Aaron and his team were able to incorporate that into, you know, into the headstone. So headstones aren't just, um, you know, um, I guess traditional anymore. You, you can do so much with um, with them. And, and it's such a wonderful place to go and remember um, Dave. And, and, you know, and this is no small piece of kit as well. Heavy, heavy rock. But Aaron was able to um, to get it in there. And you can see the, um, uh, you know, the lovely writing. It just, it just looks amazing. And, you know, my family was so um, uh, proud, Aaron, um, when we unveiled um, the headstone. You can see the rock there. Um, uh, see, uh, this was, this will be my mum's, of course. Um, so, you know, she's got her, her place ready to go. There's some books down here. Dave was an avid reader, so we were able to put um, books there. You've got a lovely. Um, uh, fish hook, um, um, greenstone sort of Māori pendant right in the middle. Dave was a very big fan of that. And of course, my mum's Māori, so we were able to bring that all together. So guys, this is what Aaron does, and it's no small feat. He does a wonderful job. And again, Aaron, I just want to say massive kudos to you and, and um, everything that you do up there. Pretty well, mate. Thank you very much. It's, uh, yeah, um, probably, yeah, I would say, but... Um, yeah, thank you. you know, You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. And enjoy what we do and, and meeting good people and, and things like that. So. Oh, good. Look well, out so yeah, thing. yeah, absolutely, mate. Right. Let's talk about family. So um, introduce us. Uh, do, do you, are you married? Uh, do you have a partner? Do you have children? No. So, uh, well, do you have a do you have a child and, uh, and a partner with a little blended family? So uh, I was a fairly early starter. Um, I thought I might have been the first, actually. Oh. Uh, my son is nearly 26. Um, so I was about 19 when uh, when he came along. Wow. Uh, I think Setu. Yeah, I think Setu beat me, actually. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, well, he's, he's a little bit older. But, uh, yeah, so started very young. Um, so that kind of had a little path where I didn't do the uh, the OE like a lot of these, you know, a lot of you boys have done, uh, which, which I would have liked to, but my place was here. Yep. looking after my boys so um we'll, we'll travel a little bit later on we've done a few little travels awesome, um man. and then uh my partner so i'm um, split up with uh brayden's mum uh, after about three years i think it was three three and a half four years um and then about 10 years ago uh i met met my current partner shannon and uh we, we get on very well and i'm very lucky but not not married as yet engaged but um 
Yeah. Oh, beautiful. We'll get there one day. Oh, congratulations um, on the engagement. Yeah, and how, how, long, how long have you been engaged? Oh, about eight years now. So okay. I do get a little bit of grief for that. <laughs> yeah, I would say so, just quietly. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh. and then Shannon, um, we've got her daughter, um, Aria, who is 19, and she's doing musical theatre, um, studying a degree in musical theatre. Wow, what a, be um, a bit of beautiful, beautiful name too, Aria. Yeah, little oh. yeah, little blended family. It, it works well, so we're very, very lucky because there is some stories of blended families that don't go too well. But we're we're very lucky. It's you know yep. we, we all get on well. So good, mate. Yeah, it's good, good, good to hear. And where's home for you now exactly? Where, where are you living? Uh, so we're just in an upper hut, so just Routley Crescent, um, nice and nice and close to work. Um, we do want to do the the lifestyle thing at, at some point, maybe over to, uh, you know, our old valley, Whiten's Valley, uh, Mangaroa maybe. But um, nice. yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see, wait till the kids are both still at home. So yeah. we'll, that, that, we'll wait until they... It's actually a good point you just raised there. So uh, Whiteman's Valley is is very, is sort of just over the hills of, of Upper Hutt. So is that, is that um, um, named uh, after your family? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. So all our uh, ancestors, they came in and settled there and founded all that land. And they actually, we saw a map of Upper Hutt. They actually owned quite a bit of um, Upper Hutt back in the day. So um, unfortunately, there's, I think there might be a carpool left over there, but most of the farm have all, you know, obviously been split up and, and that sort yeah. of thing. But wow, yeah, wow. it's a That's good spot awesome. over there. We kind of, it'd be, it'd be nice to get there one day, but. You know, yeah. these real estate prices, mate, things keep going up and <laughs> it's, it's getting bit, harder and harder. <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's absolutely crazy. Let's take you yeah, back to stream yeah. and your memories of it. Um, look, we had wonderful years, etc. What were your memories or, or things that you can remember that have, you've held on to in your memory all this time? Let us, what, what are you thinking? Yeah, like it, it's... Um, it's it's such a great place. There was there was so many, um, as everyone said. There's so many good, you know, good things that happen. All the sporting events, you know, you really really uh, in, enjoy those when you get, you know, all the chants and the you know the harkers and all that sort of stuff. You know, that was that, I enjoyed that. Um, I thought we had pretty good teachers. Um, you know, I think we were pretty pretty lucky for the most part. Or I was um, had uh, Mr. Duffy and. And a couple of the boys have touched on his his sort of teaching style, and um, I, I thought he was great. You know, like he mm. knew he put the voice on, and you know, you, you didn't muck around. You, you buckled down, and you and you did you know did work in, in Mr. Duffy's class. But it's also good to have a yarn to and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, it, listening to the borders, um, kind of all the the hijinks and that sort of stuff that they got up to. Um, that's mm -hmm. quite entertaining. And obviously, day boys, we we probably you know we go home at the end of the day. There might be the odd weekend thing, but certainly nothing to what you boys got up to. <laughs> it sounds like a hell of a lot of fun. Um, yeah, yeah, an absolute hell of a lot of fun. So, um, and I think probably the in sixth form, like you had your your day boy and your boarders. You know, there was that kind of separation maybe earlier on, and then I kind of felt in sixth form that things were kind of you know melting together a bit more. Um, but obviously not going to seventh and I think seventh form would have really cemented. So for you guys that, that did go, you know, all the way to seventh form, um, I think you guys would be really, really close. And I think it's, yeah, that year would have been quite a special year. Yeah. Right, def reckon, but, yeah, yeah. You're, you're spot on. You're absolutely spot on. And I agree with you. Sixth form for me was, was the, the melting year or the, or the, the, the definitely um, cementing year of, Borders yeah. and, and day boys and I know uh, look I only did a uh, half of seven form because I popped away for a student exchange but yeah, I, I, yeah. I know and I can see from the photographs even tonight's photographs the mixture of yeah. day boys and borders was was tight in the seven form year but very much yeah, so yeah 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 for sure hey you played um, you played a lot of rugby at stream did you have any uh, favorite uh, teams that you really enjoyed playing in I did like I um I've got well, a couple of couple of memories. Um, Scott Jensen got into the five A team, so that was me in the in the five B team, <laughs> and uh, we got the honour of being hammered by over a hundred points. One game that was against Upper Hutt five A, and oh, wow. uh, 
yeah, we got absolutely, and I was the kicker off that day as well. So I got good practice at um, at, at kicking off. And then uh, I've actually been on the receiving end of 200 point hidings. I got got a hiding in senior rugby uh, once before as well. Wow. Um, but that, and then going into under 15B, um, I think I was fourth form, no, it would have been fifth form. Um, I was still quite small and going into the under 15 open grade. Um, and I, I quite enjoyed that. Uh, on there and then my final year we played for 2b and we won the grade that year which was pretty awesome we had a really good team i think yeah had, um michael murphy on the team uh sean pinfold there's a few few guys in there it was it was a good good team and we yeah. we did quite well yeah so it's yeah, quite yeah. enjoyable yeah. oh good on you no no i know i've known you for a while you've always liked your rugby and and like i said in my intro always punched well above your weight um do you keep in touch with anyone now from uh, stream that we, that we went to school with so probably the the only one of our year um was ryan swanson yes um, we were we were quite quite good mates at school um and you know we used to spend a lot of time with with ryan and, and after school we we you know we mucked around a lot and we played a lot of rugby together as well so we both went and played for upper hut um in different different senior teams I didn't play any junior stuff um I just went and played senior rugby um and and then I think and what yeah we ended up we, we played at the end we played in different teams but yeah so uh, there's Ryan and then I ended up I think because I left school early and and I didn't play the age grade stuff um I think that you know I ended up hanging out with guys as a bit you know a bit older than me yeah um and so I ended up um sort of a group of guys in there about five years ahead of us at school, Simon Marshall, um, um, Jeff Stewart, who was in our year, his older brother, oh, yes. him, yep. Um, yep. those kind of guys, uh, Brendan Anstis and uh, uh, Paul Delahunty. So there's a, a group there um, and an extended group of different schools and things. So that was my kind of main thing. And then I've really bumped in. I played touch with Bennett Quinn um and john poffin back in the day nice we had a, nice. Had a touch team in town so sort of those guys but again a bit older but probably ryan's really the as far as i can remember probably the only one that i've, I've kind of kept in touch with really wow um, fantastic so. and th thanks for putting us in touch with ryan too great guy um as you say and um, a fantastic rugby player underrated yeah uh, yeah yeah my, no, my, he, my was, he was good he was yeah. I, I remember him um um just a tackling machine you know and if he was your last last man of defense which he often was at 15 you know yeah, you, yeah. you're pretty yeah. safe uh, he was underrated so that, that carried on um right through when we played at upper hut as well yeah uh, yeah yeah very very solid and um yeah very good good player oh wicked so. Now, yeah. uh, Aaron, you've you've watched most of the videos that, that are on our YouTube channel, and and a lot of the guys have really enjoyed them and and listening to other stories. What have your thoughts been of all the different um, catch ups and videos and, and stories that you've heard? What what have you thought, mate? Fantastic, um, and I think big big ups to you for doing it. And I think uh, the sort of thinking back of anyone at school that that would have been you know. The right person to do this it's it's you yeah um, oh, thank you and, mate. Uh, mate yeah i couldn't picture anybody else doing this and taking control and just and running with it and you know, your your uh, enthusiasm is is amazing so uh, well done um Jeez, the stories of the guys like the, the varied lives that everyone's had uh, and having um you know that it's, it's yeah it's really really good like some of them traveled far and wide had some amazing experiences and, and things like that and you know, it's really, really good to hear what everyone's up to. Um, I do feel for Mike Byrne. Um, he, you know, I always remember him at school with a, um, always had kind of a grin on his face. He was always had a smile. And I, I was expecting that when I came on the video, um, that he'd have that, that sort of cheeky grin. But he, um, yeah, I, I hope you get that back. And I hope if you're watching this, Michael, I hope you, um, you know, you get that back because um, you, you, you deserve that. So, well, wow. Well, yeah. That's a, a wonderful. I hope you come um, right. Yeah, good on you, bro. Appreciate that. Now, look, you are joining us, of course, this Saturday um, night, and the, and the guys will be stoked to catch up with you. You can catch up with everyone. Scotty J, of course, uh, Duffy, who's now the rector down yeah. at school. Um, are, you, are you around on Friday night for, for a sneaky cold one down at the uh, tote? I may be. I'm not, right. not 100% sure yet, but, yeah, we'll certainly see how we go. 
All right, mate. Um, we're going to finish up now, but your message to the rest of the guys that'll be watching this video now, we're going to release it in about 10 minutes. So do you want to give them a wee shout out? Yeah. Hey guys. Um, very, very awesome to see what you're all up to. Um, yeah, it's just been, been great. Looking forward to, you know, catching up in person to those that are down there. Those that can't, I'm sure as, as Eugene said through these videos, it'll be a, a chance for, for guys to catch up and, um, you know, Anybody that um, hasn't done a video, yeah, definitely go for it. It's, um, it's it's good to see what everyone's up to. And best wishes to everyone if I don't don't see them and, and that sort of thing on, on Saturday. But just, yeah, keep on enjoying yourselves. It looks like everyone is. So just carry on and have fun. Well, there you go, fellas. The man himself from Upper Heart, Aaron Whiteman. What an awesome we uh, catch up and chat with him. He does wonderful work uh, as a profession. And I know it's a job, but he really does go the extra mile. So thanks again, Aaron, for all that you do in, in that respect. Sweet. And thanks for joining us tonight. Look forward to having a yeah, couple of beers, pleasure. a couple of beers yeah. with you at the weekend and, uh, and and just catching up. There you go, fellas. Yeah, Aaron, White, Aaron Whiteman. Thank you, bro. Awesome. Thanks, Huge. Awesome. See you, man.